So we had we make about eight different styles of cheese, like I mentioned before, um, the the soft spreadable uh, uh, sheep's milk cheese. Um, it's patterned after the the French cheese brebis, and um, we make that in, in six different flavors: uh, plain as well as uh, nettle, garlic herb, rosemary, spicy chilies, and garlic peppercorn. Um, and then we make uh, two styles of bloomy rind uh, cheese. One is a uh, is a 100% sheep's milk. That's our uh, Dirt Lover, which is um, one of our most popular cheeses. Dirt Lover is styled after the uh, the ash coated French uh, goat cheeses, uh, like Valencay, for example. Um, but it has a a coating of it's 100% sheep's milk. It has a coating of ash on the outside, and then. Um, a uh, bloomy rind with penicillium candidum mold on the outside. Um, and then the other uh, soft ripened bloomy rind style cheese that we make is our woolly rind, which is a blended uh, cow and sheep milk camembert style cheese. Um, we also make two styles of washed rind cheese. One is our signature sheep milk washed rind cheese that is a, an original recipe. Um, and has won awards at the American Cheese Society annual competition, three years running uh, for in, in the original American Originals category. Um, uh, then our other washed rind cheese is, I, I, I like to call it a semi-washed rind because it's a uh, Robiola style cheese that's made with blended cow and sheep milk. And um, that's where we're going to try that today. It has it is washed for three weeks, and um, typically we let the bloom uh, grow in after the three weeks, which is why we kind of call it semi-washed. But we've been um, uh, trialing different rinds on the on the cheeses, and um, I think you'll find it interesting to note when we get to tasting it how uh, the our Robiola style cheese that we call Ruby has evolved over time. Um, and then we make uh, two hard cheeses. One is a 100% hard cheese that's called our Prairie Tome, and it's similar to a Manchego, or if you've ever had the, the pure joy of trying the Croatian cheese Kashki Sur, it's, uh, it was actually uh, patterned on a recipe that I learned from a Croatian uh, cheesemaker uh, at a workshop in Wisconsin. Um, so our prairie tome is made very similar to the Croatian style cheese Pashki Sur, um, and it has a, uh, a washed rind. And then our uh, um, uh, blended cow and sheep milk uh, hard cheese is an alpine style cheese. It's made with, as I said, blended cow and sheep milk, and it is a, um, an alpine style with a natural rind. So. Um, uh, those are, those are, that's our catalog of cheeses. Um, Michael, did you want to put those, uh, the photos of the cheese up and I can walk us through the individual pairings? Yeah, I thought we would uh, start with that, but I just wanted to make sure that you, you uh, talked, you said everything that you wanted to say about uh, the farm and uh, working with sheep and all that, just making sure. Sure, absolutely. Well, I did. I did want to mention um, the reason that we brought in, uh, we, as we were trying to scale and grow, um, because when we we first started making the cheese, we had uh, we sold it all and didn't really even have to put in any marketing effort. But what we discovered is that the cost of producing cheese with sheep milk, because sheep are such low volume producers, is so high that um, we needed to find another way to other ways to. Um, make the business not just environmentally sustainable, but also economically sustainable. So we have, over time, we have added um, growing with more, with other sheep dairies. So the, as I mentioned before, um, we have partnered with other sheep dairies, but then we also added a um, cow dairy. One single cow dairy is able to bring us um, all the same amount of milk that we can get from five sheep dairies. Uh, but this is cow's milk, and it's beautiful Jersey cow's milk um, from a single source, also grass-based and animal welfare approved. So um, we're still growing uh, the, the, the um, artisan cheese business on a small farm scale is very, very uh, challenging from an economic perspective. So um, we, we continue to grow and, um, and work on that. 
Um, shall we try some cheese? This cheese is our Ozark, which uh, this is a relatively new cheese for us. We started making it in 2016. We've got the Ozark in this um, uh, in this tasting kit that I sent over to you. And Ozark is, as I mentioned, a, a, a mountain style or alpine style blended cow and sheep milk cheese. And one of the things that I think is so fantastic uh, about it, and especially about these two different cheeses you can see here, this one is the Ozark, and you can see that it has this lovely uh, golden color. This one is our 100% sheep's milk uh, prairie tome, also a hard cheese, very similar recipes, but the, the, there's a, a stark difference in the colors. Um, and that's a fascinating thing about, um, about uh, cheese, um, particularly in milk. Uh, milk from cows that are fed grass concentrate a lot of beta carotene in their milk. And that's what gives this cheese its wonderful golden yellow color. Um, but interestingly, sheep and goats do not concentrate beta carotene in their milk. And so they don't have, they, they typically have much whiter cheeses. They don't have this beautiful golden color. And I think it's very fascinating to note that, um, that everybody who, uh, you know, back in the day when everyone had their own family cow, and they knew what that cow was eating and they were getting that beautiful golden colored milk and they were making butter with that, with that milk that they got from their cows in the summertime and they were making cheese with it and they were drinking it. Everybody had the common knowledge that that was the most superior milk. Those, when, the milk when the animals were on fresh grass uh, and on, on, were grazing uh, throughout the year, their milk was superior to when they were on their winter feeds like hay. Um, and uh, so everybody understood that when the cheese is that beautiful yellow color or the, or the butter is that beautiful yellow color that they were getting um, the best flavored uh, product from, from that animal. And it's what inspired um, cheesemakers to begin adding um, the vegetable dye annatto to cheeses to make them look a little bit more orange and also what inspired um, uh, the government to, to distribute little packets of annatto dye with the oleo they gave out during the depression to uh, make the, uh, to give everyone the, the impression that they were getting uh, superior tasting products. But at any rate, um, if we start with tasting this, this Ozark, um, I encourage you to go ahead and take a taste of it. Um, you can tell it has that very characteristic um, fruity flavor that comes from the Propiani bacteria that are present in this style of cheese. It's often true that those bacteria cause little holes or eyes. Um, it's very characteristic of the Swiss style cheeses like Emmentaler. Um, but uh, we, don't, we don't have eyes because we don't encourage the eye development in our aging program, but we still get that beautiful that beautiful like little bit of fruity flavor that comes along with with that um that uh aging that uh aging process that happens in the cheese so ozark is a natural rinded cheese on the outside of the cheese it has a um a rind where we just allow uh the natural um microflora in our aging room to populate that rind. Um, we do that by, in the very early stages of, um, of the aging of that cheese, we will wash it a, you know, a few times just to make sure we're getting uh, rid of anything we don't really want to have on that rind. And then after that, once we start to establish um, this rind, uh, it'll grow in uh, and typically have this uh, bloomy character, white, uh, um, white and gray uh, colored molds growing on the outside of it. And we keep the, the aging room relatively dry in order to, um, in order to, to develop that rind like that. And well, before we, before we jump in there, in the, uh, in the pairing kit, uh, you had uh, the salami and you have the uh, Effie's and you also have a spread. 
So yeah. with this type of cheese, what direction would you recommend that they go? Because we can go uh, any direction in there. Well, I really love that uh, vanilla peach bourbon preserves with the Ozark. I think that's a, a really nice pairing. Um, whenever I do pairings, I like to try all of the different things with all of the different cheeses. Um, and that the, the Veneto is a, um, is a, is a Salumi from the St. Louis side of our state. Uh, the, a hard uh, cheese made with uh, nutmeg and cloves and uh, I think a little cinnamon in there and it's a it's also really yummy with the Ozark. Yeah I find that the the Ozark's got a wonderful nuttiness to it uh, you know it took me by surprise because of the size and the shape and how it looked I thought it was going to be a little bit more tangy and uh, so uh, that really was a little bit of a jump to have all that really nice uh, peanut nut, not bitter. It's a really nice, it's not too sweet. It's just got a really nice balance. There's a little bit of uh, that uh, sweet milk in there, that, you, that cream that you get from the sheep's milk that gives us a really uh, great flavor. And I, you know, in your description, you talked about being a little ofer like and I can see that. But this is so much milder than that, but it has all of the structure of the flavor. It has all the nuttiness, the sweet nuttiness, not that bitter nut that you get from Emmentaler in that. So that's really nice. And then with the preserves, it just really brings out that nutmeg and a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of vanilla. They really blend really well. It's not like one's over another. And then you recommended a, a hoppy beer. So uh, uh, what I thought was uh, I went with the Lagunitas, uh, their daytime IPA. It's got a nice hoppiness to it, but it's also... Uh, it's got a, a really nice cleansing and, uh, you know, with all the butter here, I really wanted something that would help it out just a little bit, but I didn't want it to get in the middle. And mm -hmm. so that's a, that's a direction I took. That sounds fabulous. Um, a little too early for me to have a beer, but, <laughs> mm. um, it, I, I'm sure that that is really, really delicious. All right. Well, let's go on to the next one. Okay. So the next cheese is, uh, is you'll see some photos of our prairie tome. The prairie tome, we have our signature sheep stamp on it. It's a, it's a four, four to four and a half pound wheel. Um, so just a really nice size. Um, we're able to age these quite long because of the quality of the milk that goes into them. Um, and we've had some that have, have aged and maintained their flavor through about two years of age. But typically, we age them for um, two to four months before starting to sell them. And this is the picture before is how it uh, looks when it first goes into the cave. This is how it looks when it's ready to be wrapped. Um, we, similar to um, uh, Pashti Sur and uh, Manchego and um, some of the other uh, Alpine style cheeses, we continually wash the rind on this cheese just until before it's ready to be um, packaged. And so it develops that uh, beautiful orange rind on the, on the outside of it. And this particular batch, um, it was very classic sort of Manchego flavor, I think. with that caramel nutty flavor that's so characteristic of um, sheep milk cheeses. What do you think, Michael? This I think is goes really beautifully with the Veneto. I was pouring my beer when you were saying that. So, uh, yeah, Manchego sheep's milk, but you know, the Croatian version of this is uh, really what I more associate this with uh, because uh, uh, the Manchego, you know, that has that uh, zigzag pattern of the rind on it, where this has that beautiful, slightly earthy rind on that. This is just a beautiful cheese. And, you know, on my piece, you might be able to see this, but you can see some of the uh, oil, the butterfat on how rich this is, that this is really an amazing 
uh, rich piece of cheese. Mm. So on the pairing board, what direction would you go here? I would go with the Veneto, the salumi, I think. Well, I've been waiting for you to say that. <laughs> mm. I can see why you put these two together. Mm -hmm. mm. I really love the spicing on that salumi. Mm -hmm. The uh, your favorite of all of the salumi bedou um, sausages. When you're working with uh, uh, salamis, uh, they have a tendency to, uh, you know, you either get the hard ones that uh, nearly chew, you have to chew off pieces from and or the intensity of the flavors are just too rich. This has got a nice balance. There's a lot of flavor in this. There's, there's black pepper, there's uh, garlic in here, there's just a, a lot, but it's just so well made. And it's, uh, it's also uh, soft, you know, so it really is, it goes in. And then the cheese has enough power to come out and uh, be part of it. And I think that that, again, the sheep's milk that comes out, that sweet cream flavor really accents that. And, and again, I'm getting that, that beautiful nutmeg coming out of there and uh, just really nice. I'm pairing this up. You suggested on their uh, website that uh, it would go really well with a wheat beer. And, uh, you know, here in Florida, uh, you know, we have a beach blonde. So uh, I'm going with the uh, Three Daughters Beach Blonde because, I, again, I don't want any hops in here. And that's where I thought you were going was uh, not hops and yes. just a little bit right. of uh, more grain. Yes, absolutely. Kind of a little maltiness, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's light, um, doesn't have any other flavors that really interfere, more of a cleanser. And, uh, you know, the, it really brings in the beautiful flavors of, uh, you know, on, on this cheese's rind. So this is a, a, a natural rind. Can you explain that a little bit more about what the, what a natural rind is? Sure. Uh, a, a natural rind um, in, in my lexicon means that we, have not uh, covered the rind up. We haven't cryovacked it. We haven't put um, a, a wax coating on it. In, we haven't done anything to um, prevent the rind from growing in naturally. And um, we do that with both the, the prairie tome and the Ozark rinds. Um, but with the, uh, the prairie tome, we wash it more. We give it more washings throughout its life cycle in order to encourage that um, the brevi bacterium to grow in and that and that microbiome that we associate with washed rind cheeses. So you get that beautiful orange color on that cheese and then on our uh, on the rind of that cheese. And then on our, our Ozark, we typically let it go completely natural. We don't, uh, you know, after we've washed it a couple times in, it, in the early part of its um, aging, we just let it grow um, a, a nice little uh, fuzzy coat on the outside. And that, um, when, we, when we allow that to happen, what happens is that we get a, a, a thicker rind that protects the interior of the cheese a lot more. Um, some cheese makers will actually put, um, if you've heard of bandaged wrap cheddars, uh, put a cloth um, coating on the outside and then, and then cover that coating sometimes with lard. Um, to help protect the cheese from uh, any extraneous uh, mold growth. But uh, the way that our rinds grow in, we, the, the cheese itself forms its own natural barrier to protect the cheese on the interior of the cheese. And when we have a hard enough cheese, like one of these, um, these hard, low moisture cheeses, like we have with the Ozark and Prairie Tome, um, we, we, we can age them almost indefinitely once we get that, um, that rind on the outside. Anything else you want to say about the tome? Um, no. Well, it, it won a good food award in uh, 2019. We we're very proud of that. And it has won a few, a few ribbons at uh, American Cheese Society. So we're very proud of that cheese. Our next cheese is, uh, is Ruby. And um, I, I mentioned it um, earlier that it's a, a style that we made patterned after 
the classic Italian cheese robiola. Uh, and it's similar to the, 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 the Italians, uh, Italian cheese makers are frequently blend, uh, blend milks in Italy. Um, because of course, sheep milk is very popular in Italy, but um, similar to us, they, they have the economic challenge that uh, sheep produce rare, very small volumes of milk. So it's been very traditional over the years for Italians to blend their sheep milk with other milks. Um, and um, this style of robiola is often referred to as a due lati style, of, of be, meaning two milks. Um, and ours has sheep and cow milk and that we have that beautiful Jersey cow's milk um, from our farmer uh, that's just a little bit uh, uh, nearby to us. Um, our, our dirt, our ruby, if you, if you go back to the previous picture, you'll notice that it has kind of two different rinds going on. Uh, in that previous picture, uh, was Ruby the way we made it last year uh, in 2019? And um, if you take a close look at that, Michael, can you go back to that, uh, that previous picture? If you take a close look at that, you'll see it looks much more, has much more the character of a bloomy rind style cheese with the, uh, the rind made up of penicillium candidum, the, the white mold that we typically associate with uh, brie and camembert. Um, but um, over time, we decided, well, when back in uh, 2019, when we were making uh, Ruby, um, we, we decided we wanted to give Ruby a little bit more complexity to her flavor because mm -hmm. uh, she was a little flat, we thought. And so we decided that one of the things that we would do to, um, to contribute a bit more flavor would be to wash the rind. And um, that's the ruby that we have this year. Um, our ruby is much more, um, has much more washed rind character to it. Um, previously, we only washed it for two to three weeks and then let the white rind grow in. And this year we've washed it um, probably more like five weeks. And that's really developed that um, orange uh, Brevi bacterium linens um, color on the outside that, um, and given it also, it's the funk. You may have noticed if it, if you have your cheese sitting out at room temperature, and I hope you do, um, that you now have a room that is uh, permeated by the smell of ruby. Um, it's a lovely, funky, um, washed rind style of cheese that uh, um, that we're really we're really enjoying. Um, this particular batch is uh, creamy and um, milky uh, and has uh, lots of good um, sort of cabbagey, kind of um, um, meaty cabbagey flavors. There's also a little bitterness on the rind and that is coming through. This is an older batch. Um, that's really coming through. If you like a little bit of bitterness, I think it's pretty well balanced. What do you think, Michael? I think it's uh, uh, very classic in its flavor characteristic. Um, you know, having the, uh, the, the washed rind on here, uh, you're exactly right about the cabbage. And I happen to love cabbage. I love washed rinds uh, as, a, as a cheese judge. Washed rinds are my favorite to be able to judge because of the diversity. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people that are hesitant to be able to pick up a washed rind because of the uh, how aromatic they can be. But I, I can say that in most instances, having that aroma tells you that there's some really interesting flavors that uh, are going to be with the cheese. And that, it, that goes without saying with this, because this is really it's all about the butter. It's all about uh, some earthiness and that cabbage and that, uh, you know, really distinct flavors. Um, you know, this is a, a unique cheese that on any cheese board would be, would separate your cheese board out from the ordinary. You know, as they talk about, you know, doing something in a cheese board that really brings out something special, this, this would do that. So what would you uh, suggest uh, on the pairing on this one? I love this with Effie's oat cakes. 
Okay. Effie's oat cakes are these, they're, I like to tell people they're really a cookie, <laughs> but, um, but they're fabulous. And um, the Effie's oat cakes has that little, you know, that little, um, the sweetness and the oatiness. I just think I just love it with Ruby. Also think it goes with the Benito. Everything goes with Benito. <laughs> Mm. It's and you know, the, good the oat cakes are uh, a little uh, sweet, but there's some saltiness to it, and that saltiness really brings out more of this butter. You really that butter just jumps right out, and it's it's actually like having a slab of butter on this now. So it's a tea cake with uh, oat and and uh, the butter flavors that's naturally in it. This is just a, a decadent. Uh, uh, you know, cheese snack. And, and yeah. I think that this, that is a really wonderful pairing. In your information, you uh, said that uh, a little bit of a, a sweet or a creamy uh, beer. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking about what I've paired before. And so I went with a brown ale and this is uh, uh, Cigar City. This is a local brewery, uh, has three daughters. Is, and uh, uh, this is the Maduro Brown. So uh, really classic brown ale, no hoppiness. It's not a stout uh, where you have the bitterness in here. So this is all malt. So it's really, really a, a malty beer with the butter and then with the uh, uh, biscuit uh, is, is just fabulous. It's, yeah. That sounds <laughs> great. Really rich. I wish I was tasting that. <laughs> that sounds mm. really good. Now, creamy beers are fantastic with uh, with Ruby. I also like it with uh, champagnes and bubblies, you know, because again, you mentioned earlier with the uh, with the Ozark that kind of uh, mouth uh, scrub scrubbing action of carbonation, how that really helps with cheeses that have um, a lot of richness to them. Um, so um, yeah, the bubbles go really well with the Ruby as well. So. How did you decide to do this style of cheese? This is not, you know, I mean, again, it's like you, you, you've chosen the, uh, uh, the most difficult animals with the lowest yield, the uh, grazing, and then you choose a cheese that is not, you know, that is not, it falls into any simple, uh, gee, I can make this really easy. This one requires so much love and time. Why did you choose, why did you go that way? Oh, I, um, you know, I, I chose to make cheeses that I really loved. I was uh, very lucky. Um, at, it, I had a fantastic childhood growing up on a series of small farms, but I had an aunt who owned a gourmet cheese shop when I was a teenager. And I would go at the holidays and help her sell cheese and um, do her catering because uh, that was the busiest time of the year for her. And she taught me to love fine cheese. And in fact, um, I was living in San Francisco in the mid-80s, and I got to go with her. She would come out and visit me, and we'd go to the fancy food show together. And um, I think that was my original inspiration for cheese. But she taught me about the, 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 the fine, soft, ripened cheeses of Europe, and I just fell in love with those. Uh, they weren't, you know, they weren't the cheeses of my childhood, for sure. Um, but uh, because I had that introduction to them through her, I, I just uh, have, have always gravitated towards those styles of cheese. Um, I love the flavors in them. And um, one of the things that we do with our sheep milk, which is relatively unusual, is to create soft ripened cheeses uh, with sheep milk. You don't find that very often. Um, so, uh, you know, I really, uh, I, I, and I, I love the Italian style mixed milk cheeses. I love Taleggio and, and Robiola and um, that was my that was my real inspiration for making these cheeses. It was not born out of a pra very much of a pragmatic <laughs> or practical um, impulse. It was all uh, you know wanting to to um, learn and craft um, the cheeses that I, I loved the most. So in your, uh, 
you're making this obviously uh you know you're we're getting out of you're going to be getting into the season again of grazing and lambing and that uh what uh typically once you get this ready for shipping about what what what's the parameters for its shelf life in other words what happens in 10 days or 30 days or 45 days the characteristics that you expect from it sure well um most of our soft ripened cheeses have an arc that's about 12 weeks long. Uh, so most of our, 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 our cheeses like um, Bossa, our washed rind cheeses like Bossa and Robiola, the softer cheeses, and our bloomy rind styles like our Dirt Lover and our Woolly Rind, those cheeses um, uh, really um, progress through a ripening arc uh, from, from when they're very, very young and fresh to uh, about about at about 12 weeks old, they become uh, ammoniated and bitter and really not not very palatable for eating. Um, but typically, right around six to eight weeks, we feel that that they're at their peak. When we're shipping cheese direct to customers through our website, we try to choose the cheeses so that they will arrive in that six to eight week peak window. So our customers will have a week to two weeks to to um to eat them um or you know three weeks depending it, but we we also find that our customers are are really varied in what how they like the cheeses some of our customers uh love our dirt lover for example when it's very very fresh and it's almost like it's almost has a texture of feta um but then if you wait and and as it progress as it ripens it out ripens from the outside in towards a center core and if you wait until it's like about three quarters the way ripened that's at about eight uh, to nine weeks of shell of from its its made date. Um, it, it will have tremendous uh, complexity and um, flavor development that's very very different than it was at you know two one to two weeks of age right out of the right out of the aging cave. Um, when we're selling to a cheese shop or to a distributor, that's a different thing altogether. We try to ship to them when the cheeses are really young so that they will have the maximal shelf life for getting it into the stores. When I received the cheeses, they were wrapped beautifully in a unique wrap. Can you talk about that? Sure. That's a special wrap that we get from a cheese a specialty supply house called Fromagex. Uh, they're, it's a French company and a French and Canadian company. And uh, they make um, specialty cheese wraps that uh, allow the cheese to continue to breathe and develop in the, uh, on the shelf. So once it's wrapped in that cheese, as long as it hasn't been cut into, it often will continue to ripen uh, normally uh, for you know three to four weeks uh, once you've got it in your refrigerator uh, in that special wrapping paper. So I'm not going to finish my cheese today. And so what, what would be your suggestion for me to be able to wrap it up? Well, I normally wrap it back into the paper that we have. Um, if you're not too squeamish about the fact that on the cut edges of the cheese, it is likely to develop some mold if you don't get to it for another couple of weeks. Um, if, if you're okay with cutting that off, I would recommend that you just wrap it back up in that same wrapping paper. If you really want to keep it from developing any mold on the cut surfaces, I would wrap it in tightly in some plastic wrap. But I would still get to it within two weeks. Don't, don't leave it sitting in your fridge. It'll turn into a fuzzy mess. Let's talk about mold, uh, you know, because typically uh, Telegio comes in uh, almost like a green furry animal. So uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that's mold is inevitable in many ways. And uh, so on this particular cheese, uh, you know, what would you do if you do pick up some mold? Well, uh, all of these cheeses already have molds on them. They're naturally on those rinds. We, we actually um, in, intentionally populate the rinds with uh, molds. These are, these are good molds. They're not, uh, there's, there's nothing um, unhealthy about them. Uh, uh, and they're they're a natural part of the cheese making process, but um, in your refrigerator, they're likely your cheeses are likely to pick up some more blue molds, uh, and 
some more white molds that might be present in your refrigerator. I don't think that uh, they are anything to worry about. They can just be cut off and you can consume the cheese, but um, some people are uh, hesitant to do that. And I, I um, but I encourage you to, to with, these, with these cheese molds, not to worry. All right, good to know. So anything else you'd like to talk about the cheeses? Uh, I have one more slide that I wanna show. Well, actually a couple, but the, uh, the cheese board here. That, that's that's a little cheese board that we um, cater. We have a little shop near our farm in Weston, and uh, we do caterings on that cheese board. It's got our logo on it. It's a lot of fun. So that's a collection of some of our different cheeses you can see there. Um, at the very bottom of the photo is our uh, is a little lactic style cheese that we have been making called Tuffet. It's a geotrichum rinded cheese. That means it has a yeast that grows on the outside. And then up in the very top at 12 o'clock is our dirt lover. You can see that with the, with the ash on the outside. And then um, the little cup contains our soft spreadable sheep's milk cheese uh, that's similar to the, the French sheep's milk cheese brebi. Um, and then you can see our ruby. That's uh, what ruby looks like, um, as, as you know, from, uh, from having it in your package. And then the two, the two wedges, the prairie tome and the uh, Ozark there on the board. Uh, Elizabeth O'Brien says, um, uh, the cheese are wonderful. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I love Effie's biscuits with Ruby also. That's what she says. Um, and then uh, Diane Montague asks, uh, many of our cheeses to order online right now are out of stock. That's true. Um, when do we have, expect to have the Ozark available again, um, or do you have it available at the farm? Uh, unfortunately, Diane, fortunately, actually, not unfortunately, but fortunately for us, we had a very busy holiday cheese selling season and we sold out of, of so many things. And um, we typically have a little bit of downtime in January when the, the sheep and the cows are producing much less milk. And uh, we use that time to do repair work in our cheese kitchen, that kind of thing. So we, we actually haven't been in production and uh, we're just starting up next week. Uh, we'll probably have all of our soft cheeses back in stock by mid to th the third week of February. And unfortunately, Ozark has a minimum uh, aging time of two months. So we're probably not gonna have Ozark back in stock for um, until, uh, let's see, till probably the beginning of April is when we'll have Ozark back in stock, unfortunately. Um, Jim and Kathy Wilson ask, what happens if other undesirable grasses are introduced into our pastures? Um, that happens. We have, we have a number of, um, of invasive uh, grass species that we don't want to have in our pastures. Um, we, uh, we do a lot of different uh, methods for eradicating them. Uh, one of them is to concentrate the animals on that, that pasture until they eat it down so far that it uh, dies back. Um, another is to mow it uh, a lot. We uh, really mow it heavily. Um, that often doesn't completely solve the problem. We usually uh, spend you know, time every year um, trying to defeat some of the invasive pasture grasses that we don't want to have. Um, we're thinking about getting goats uh, because goats often will um, help us with brush and uh, weed control. So we may get, we may, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> you can uh, uh, watch our Instagram. My daughter does a great job of um, telling the farm story on Instagram, so. Are there any other questions for us? Thank you so much for your questions, by the way. Looks like that's it. Thanks for grabbing that. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, a video of the farm and uh, that I hope you'll enjoy. I'll tell you a little bit about it as it's going along. Here you can see our, our sheep. The sheep actually do frolic. It's, it's quite uh, wonderful to see. Are they eating grass. Here they are in the milking parlor. You can see the clever ones have figured out how to get a little bit more of their treat. And uh, this is actually, we don't uh, pour milk into the vat this way anymore, but that's the way we used to do it. And here's a little bit more, you, you'll see some uh, of a, a little bit more again of washing the rind. 
And then uh, that's our dirt lover cheese being cut. We host uh, tastings on the farm. And this is our old barn where we actually used to do the um, milking and cheese making before we got our new facility. And there you are back to the grass again. I'm so glad that I got a chance to tell you about our farm and our cheeses. Thank you for inviting me, Michael. It was certainly my pleasure. Uh, you know, the amount of uh, time and effort that you put in this is incredible. And I think that a lot of times when people are buying cheese, they think cheese is just a matter of separating the curd from the whey. But uh, obviously it is. But at the same point is that uh, buying milk from a farm, uh, getting all those things and versus uh, you know, handling your own sheep and handling your own uh, uh, pastures and moving everything. That's, uh, uh, you know, that, that's admirable. I just, uh, I, I just love that whole part about, uh, I grew up in Iowa, so farming is a, a really a part of my life. And to see this and to see this dedication and, of course, ecologically, uh, it's so impressive. Uh, thank you. you. You do a magnificent uh, job on uh, the cheeses and then of course you know taking care of the stewardship of our uh, our lambs. Thank you so much really appreciate it and appreciate the, the opportunity to tell you about it. Well you know you have other cheeses that we can look at uh, in May we have uh, American Cheese Month so um, oh. hopefully we can have you back in May and uh, talk about uh, you know what's going on uh, in the middle of the uh, season or yes, start of the exactly. season. Yes, love to do that. All right. All right, All right. well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today. Thank you for the cheeses and the spreads. They're magnificent. And, uh, you know, this will be posted up on my YouTube channel and uh, it'll be up here in the next couple of days. And once uh, everything's back in stock, you can uh, taste along with, uh, with us. So okay, thank you great. for uh, joining us. And uh, Sarah, thank you so much for today. I appreciate it, Michael. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.